Alrighty, so this is chapter 1, section 6, two-dimensional figures. Okay, so in this section we are going to talk about polygons. Polygons are closed figures. They are formed by finite, that means they don't go on forever, finite, coplanar, on the same plane, segments. That's a really fancy way of saying sides. So, two things to know. One, the vertex of each angle is a vertex of the polygon, and a polygon we're going to name by the letters of its vertices in order. So just go around all the letters that each vertice is named in order. That's how you name it. So these are examples of polygons. They're closed figures formed by the coplanar segments. It doesn't matter if you don't recognize the shape. As long as it's a closed figure, no overlap, you're good. These right here, these are not polygons. Circular objects, ovals, um, wavy things, not polygons. Not closed figure, has overlap, has a little segment hanging off the end, not polygons. So next we're going to talk about whether or not a polygon is convex or concave. And the easiest way to explain this to you is to show you. Here I have two polygons. Now if I take the segments that make the sides of these polygons and I extend them to make them lines, take a look at what happens. With the convex polygon, notice that when I extended these lines, they didn't actually cut across the inside of the shape. Let's take a look at the concave polygon. Well, look what happened here. These two segments, when I extended them into lines, they cut right through the polygon. This is what we call concave. So that's the difference. Convex, if you extend the segments into lines, it doesn't pass through the actual interior. Concave, when you extend the segments into lines, it cuts right across or right through the polygon itself. Next, we have a couple other classifications. Equilateral polygon, lateral side, all sides congruent. Equiangular polygon, all angles are congruent. And a regular polygon is one that is convex, equilateral, and equiangular. So a regular polygon, convex, all sides and angles congruent. Now, in addition to classifying polygons such as convex or concave, equilateral, equiangular, regular, we can also classify them by the number of sides. So we have a little chart right here, um, depending on the number of sides, three sides triangle, uh, six sides hexagon and so forth, we can classify the polygon. Now at the very end, this is N. Once you get beyond 12, if you have an object, 13 sides, 13 gone. 15 sides, 15 gone, and so forth. So at this point, we also have to review perimeter, circumference, and area. Um, this chart, which you can copy down if you'd like, um, it goes through first the perimeter, triangle, square, rectangle, and circle. Remember, with the circle, we actually refer to the distance around the circle as circumference. So for this, circumference 2 times pi times radius, or remember, twice the radius would be diameter, so you could also say pi d. For a rectangle, perimeter, distance around the figure, so we have twice the length plus twice the width. You can see how that formula is derived. For a square, all sides are congruent, so side plus side plus side plus side, since there's four of them, we can simplify it to 4s. And for a triangle, you are going to add up the three sides, so all three of them added just like so. For area, remember, area of a triangle is one half base times height. Um, the reason why the half is there is because basically a triangle is half of a rectangle. So we find this the same way. They use different letters to notate it, but we find this the same way we find the area of a rectangle. Just divide by two or multiply by half, whatever is easier for you to think of. Um, the area for a square is side length times side length, so in this case side length squared, and area for, for a circle is pi r squared. That should be review for you. If it's not, you definitely want to memorize that chart. Now, this is also a good time to review another thing, the Pythagorean Theorem. Remember, the Pythagorean Theorem 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or some people like to remember it as c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. These are both the same thing. It's just here we took the square root of both sides and the square and radical sign cancel. Remember, c stands for the hypotenuse, which is the longest side on a triangle. I'll show you what this looks like in a problem. So let's say we have this problem right here. Well, we know c squared is going to equal a squared plus b squared. So there's my a and b. It doesn't matter which one's which. 7 squared is going to be 49. So I have c squared equals 49 plus 49, which would be 98. And since I want to know what c is, not what c squared, square root of both sides, this radical and the square cancel out, leaving c equals square root 98. And square root 98 would be somewhere around 9.9 .9 if you needed to estimate. Now, you're going to get some problems to ask you for the perimeter of triangles, and they're going to be missing the hypotenuse length, so you actually will need the Pythagorean theorem so you can find that missing length and then find the perimeter of the triangle. Now, another perimeter question involving triangles that you're going to get is um, if you get three coordinates and they tell you those three coordinates make a triangle and they want you to find the perimeter. Now, what you're going to have to do is use distance formula to find the distance of the legs and add them up. Let's take a look at an example. So suppose that we had this triangle and we were asked to find the perimeter of it. And there's no distances written down. Well, right here, since both of these have a y value of negative 1, that means this is a straight line right here. So I know that if I'm going from negative 3 to 4, that's a total distance of 7 units. So I know that right there, 7 units. So I only need to find two more. Now for these, we're going to go ahead and use distance formula like we used earlier. Now right here, the distance between negative 1, 3 and negative 3, negative 1, since you know distance formula, I won't bore you with the details, it comes out to square root 20. And square root 20 is about 4.5 if we had to estimate. Right here, this comes out to square root 41, and square root 41 is about 6.4, if we had to estimate. So, to find the perimeter, we would add 7 plus square root 20 plus square root 41. We would end up with about 17.9 units. Notice I'm saying units, not inches, yards, meters, etc. When you're using the coordinate plane, unless they've specified what each one of these marks relate to as far as distance, just call them units. Alright, and that's it for this section. See you in class.